Hey everybody, welcome to the third episode of Imperator Rome. We are live streaming this one, so I've got a whole chat room of people with me. It is the first day that the embargo is up, which is wonderful. Uh, I'm in the bottom right corner, which I'm not usually in when I'm on screen. Uh, that's because I don't want to cover up any of the notifications and all that stuff, and I'm not super familiar with all of them yet, so I'm not confident in putting it elsewhere on screen. So I'm just going to cover the mini-map, because none of you use the mini-map anyway, because it's a Paradox game. I don't know why there's even a mini-map. I don't think I've ever used it in any Paradox game. Let's continue. This is a Macedon Let's Play, so that's the correct one. If you might remember, if you saw the YouTube videos, for anyone watching uh, live right now, we're in our first war still. We started a war like a month into the game. Here we go. Uh, I saw a lot of you guys on YouTube, by the way, today were commenting saying that you guys like the, um, you like the political map view, which is this one, uh, where it's very stark colors. So for anyone just coming in live right now, not familiar with um, how the war has been going, we're Macedon or Macedonia. Macedon at this point, I think it's Macedonia nowadays. Uh, we are this stark, deep blue country right here. If I right click, we're, we're the ones with the big highlight around us. We're still Cassander. Uh, we are, how old are we now? 50? Now you can't die of natural causes until you're at least 65. That's worth pointing out uh, because this isn't supposed to be like CK2 where it's like a really serious simulator of stuff like that. So we're in a war right now, mostly against, uh, who did we declare on specifically? We declared on these guys, hold on. Yes, these guys. Uh, Tulantia, Tulantia. We declared on them, they have an alliance with Epirus and Mesopia, Mesopia. Mesopia has not participated in the war at all. They don't have a navy and they have no access to wood to build galleys or triremes with. So they haven't been able to get their army across the Strait of Water. And look at all the countries they would need to sign pacts of military access to be able to walk through. There's no way they could get away with doing that. So they're isolated. We're kicking the hell out of these guys, which is very exciting. Uh, if anyone has any questions in the chat, by the way, I'll try my best to answer. Um, this is set after Alexander the Great, right? Yes, this is 10 years after the death of Alexander the Great, which is why if we look at the world map right now, all the lands conquered by Alexander the Great are split up into different little kingdoms. These are different Greek overlords trying to say, I'm the successor, so Egypt and all these. Anyway, many of these. So... We need to continue this war. We're on the winning side of this war by far. We've already occupied the capital of both of the countries that we're fighting that we actually have land access to. Right now, we're trying to occupy the rest of their little bits of land so they don't have anywhere to retreat to while pushing them out of our land. What's our goal? Our goal, I want to conquer all three of these kingdoms outright or these local powers, I believe they are, outright. Uh, and take, just make a huge land grab to open the game. I took a mint. Yes, you did. Sorry, it's me. Sorry, people on my channel like making jokes about uh, King's Quest Six Because who doesn't? Disagreement on the highest level. Philip IV, a man of sound reputation. And Epolemos, a nobleman of great virtue have recently started to spar furiously whilst attending the court. Such behavior is unbecoming of the people, of these people of stature. However, we have been called upon to take a side in the latest conflict. All right, we have to pick a side here between these two. Side of Philip, uh, become friends with Philip, get a little, little, a little bit of loyalty. The other guy loses more loyalty though. Side with the other guy, don't become friends, although loyalty shifts the same as before. And tell them to both stop bickering, which makes me more popular, which is nice, uh, but they both lose loyalty. Okay, what are their ranks? Uh, da, 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 da. Do you not hold any position of power? He's the primary heir to become Basilus? That's not a, what we call our kings, is it? Oh, it is. Okay, he's the heir to the kingdom right now. 
He's not that talented, which is unfortunate. I'm not looking forward to that. Uh, this other guy here. Friend of the concert. Hmm. All right, hold on. Let's look at our government real quick. He has no position in government, does he? No, he just happens to look the same as this guy, which is incredibly confusing. No, they are the same guy. Okay. So he is this horrific rank right there that I'm not even going to try to say. What it does is it increases the morale of army based on martial skill. I'm going to piss him off. I care about him less. Uh, so I'm going to side with Philip. Make sure that our heir is loyal. There we go. Friend of the consort. Winking face. Was it Kappa? Victory. That's us squashing these guys up here. I think they are mostly in retreat. Yeah, they didn't actually lose much manpower there. Oh, did they just emergency build a fort here? Uh, that's a, an obnoxious move. Okay. Um, what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to split this army in half. And have one half grab that and then walk back to help with the siege. Hold on, where is... Sorry, this is one thing that they gotta fix. It's very hard to see around sometimes. Alright, and our allies down there are losing some fights, but at least it's occupying the enemies. Trade request! Um, who is this? Where are you? This is them. They want... Uh, we are not currently exporting. This is hemp. It would give us trireme offense, which is slightly tempting, and good money. I'll do that, actually. Yeah, I'll take that. Make our navy stronger. Speaking of, where's our navy? Our navy is still right there. I think because there's no enemy naval threat, for the sake of jacking up the um, war score, I am... Yeah, I'm blockading that port. I'm going to... Double split that. Go up there. And go up there. And block blockade both of the remaining ports. There we go. Looks more complicated than CK2. I'd consider it less complicated than CK2 overall. However, uh, it has more complicated war than CK2. Because this is a war game and CK2 is a political intrigue game. There we go. He was in retreat, ran to occupied territory, got hit by me. We stack wiped his small army and captured a commander. That was nice. Oh, they weren't ready for that. That is beautiful. I love that. All right, we've started the siege of that place. Good. All right. Kicked them. Uh, we're going to go up there, actually. I want to engage in this army because we're taking attrition marching around like this with this death stack. We don't have the kind of supply limit to feed an army that big. Oh, their fort just went down. Did they decommission their fort to save money? Did they just buy a fort and then tear it down to save money? They might have. That is a desperate and stupid move. Okay. Not currently exporting... Uh, what is this? Uh, they they want to import precious metals from us. This would decrease citizen promotion costs, which is nice and the money is good. Uh, however, it's a very small country that wants this. Yeah. One city, five population? This is a city-state that wants to import from us. But... Do I want to take this? Because isn't the bonus for precious metals quite good? Uh, precious metals. So we have a surplus of one, which gives city-provincial loyalty. You know what? I actually don't care about that surplus that much. That's not a big deal. I'll take this just for the money alone. That's a good deal. They bought and sold a fort like real estate. I know, right? What the hell are they doing? All right, well, I just occupied where that was way faster than intended. We're about to occupy that. There, we have complete occupation of this country outside of that. But that fort is going to retake it over. So, oh, they're in bad shape. This was the weaker of the countries I was fighting anyway. Okay, so those two are coming together. They've got that army there. Uh, I'm going to start unseaging some of this land, and then we just want to go knock out these last few bits. You know what I might do is actually split the army here, march over, 
and get a head start on this, because if I take the capital of all three, I'm just piecing out of the war there, taking all the land. Uh, you know what? I like that idea. They can't fight back against here anyway. It sucks leaving this uh, occupied for a little while, but I'm just going to go march to that port. And the whole navy is going to get over there and be ready. So, something I've noticed, um... Meet up there, kick the shit out of that guy, I want that port under my control. Is, uh... Boats are way, way, way faster than marching, as you could probably assume. The downside, though, is that, uh... The downside is that boats, uh... When, even if you have the correct amount of boats and everything to carry people, which is a requirement, uh you still have the problem of attrition. No matter what, as far as I can tell, people get attrition on boats, just a very, a very low level, and you can get tech later that reduces the attrition. So although you move really fast, you're going to lose a little bit of manpower. And of course, when you get off the boat, uh, your organization and morale is a little bit low. You need to... They take a little bit of time to reorganize the, the army, you know? Okay. Olympics concluded. The Great Olympic Games have come to an end, with much rejoicing and celebration. The highlight of this year's games was during the prestigious chariot race. The Sinoris? I don't know how to pronounce that. Harion of Delmatia saved a fellow competitor from an almost certain death when his chariot was overturned in the dusty mayhem of the race. Sorry. Probably loud background noises. I'm switching headset because my bad ears are awful. Sorry, my ears are probably like have like red marks on them because they're skinned and shit. The padding on that other headset is worn down quite a bit, but it sounds way better, so I use it. Um, overall, the victor was declared to be Ophelia. I, I'm just gonna Ophelia of Atolia, Atolia, the first time winner of the Olympics, whose brun virility and herculean herculean i usually see that spelled with a c vigor are beyond compare he will go down in the annals of history as a champion of the olympics ah oh, well better next time better luck next time i gain uh five popularity presumably because my pick did okay okay and we got another military victory there yeah that's over them Merge them together, no reason not to. And they're marching up there to get in the boat, so I'm just gonna go down here and siege more of their land so that they're not still mustering up more troops here and there. All right, here's what I'm gonna do now. Uh, I'm going to... Okay, they need to finish their movement because they're locked into movement, so I can't split them yet. Uh, what is this trade? Import fish. I'm actually going to decline that. The money is nice. It's a good offer, but I want the fish for, for growth right now. Okay, and we have enough civic power for another advancement. We're not anywhere close to another one of these, so... I'm going to go military tech advancement up 5%. For the rest of the game, we'll research military tech a little bit faster. That is worth it. Okay, I am going to split this. And one of these groups is going to go right there for now, just so that they're taking less attrition while waiting. Okay, we're winning that fight, definitely. We have huge numbers on them. There we go. And we need to break off... Actually, no, I'm going to go from this one. Thanks for following DB Warren. Welcome to Flock. Hope you enjoyed the stream. There we go. We won that. Let's siege that land down. Okay. And we do need to break off. Yeah. Yeah. 12 ships too small. We need to break off one cohort. We will break off one light infantry. We don't actually need that much light infantry. There we go. Lacks unit access. I'm not sure why. Oh, it you go from that one for this port. That's incredibly confusing. Okay. Let 
No? Okay, I will go in the port. I've never seen it actually make me have to go in the port. That's odd. All right, uh, so the controls on this are a little bit weird, but I do remember another way to do this is if I select the Navy and I say uh, Naval Landings and I just say that there, then it knows to uh, just put the army on. There we go. Where's the war score shown? Right down here, it's quite small. Actually, is that getting blocked by my webcam? Let me check. Shit, it is. Uh, let me make my webcam slightly smaller. It is just slightly getting blocked. Uh, if I do this, this will look weird for a second. Uh, I'm shrinking. Oh, I'm shrinking, oh no. And then right there. There you go, you can see my, my war score now. I shrunk slightly, sorry. There we go. Fixed it. Thanks for letting me know. Okay. Let's get over there. I like how it's acting like a bridge. They just went out there. It's great. Oh, naval landing aborted. Why? Awaiting new order. I... It's not... They didn't actually abort it. Okay. Again, pre-release. It's uh, probably going to be a little bit glitchy. Are they going to retreat right into me? They, I think they are. Which will just kill them. Oh no, they're still in retreat mode enough that uh, they can't fight. Okay. It's so weird how triremes work. It's literally like just making a bridge. Oof, they're right there. Oh no. They saw me coming, I guess. Yeah, I can't get away from that in time. Damn. Okay. Man, they actually have a big army there. I might need a few more boats so I can carry my guys across all at once. That or I'll just give up on getting them. I think I might just give up on taking that land and I'll take it in a different war later. All right. If so, I can take all of this right now. I think I'll just do that and then also ask for all of their money, which they'll accept, which is 300, or sorry, 113. Yeah, I'm cool with that. War's over. So this is something you get every single time you end a war with every country you're with, is you uh, get to pick what to do with their elite. After a protracted conflict, we have finally routed the Epirort armies and laid waste to their lands. During the sacking of their capital, many important prisoners were taken, many of them having previously held positions of in the court. Now they languish in our dungeons, awaiting whatever fate we decide to impose upon them. So, there's a few things we can pick here. Uh, one, we can just put the whole family to death in front of a cheering crowd in our capital. That will give us five popularity. We're already quite popular, though, and a monarch doesn't need to be super popular. We're not a republic. Uh, we can banish those of class and put the rest to the sword. That will make us lose aggressive expansion, of which we have quite a bit now. We have 12. And it goes away very slowly. Wrong culture uh, unhappiness, wrong culture group unhappiness, um, loyalty of subject states is down, and also other countries don't like us when we have a lot of aggressive expansion. They'll want to start making like defensive pacts against us, basically. So I tend to quite like getting rid of exp uh, aggressive expansion because that'll mean we can go to our next war faster because we'll be able to get away with it. Um, imprison their leaders, let the rest disappear. We lose a very small amount of popularity and we get a bunch of prisoners, uh, which we can then pick what to do with. Which, uh, you know, I've actually never done that. I'd be curious to see what we can do with that. Or pass judgment on the important families where we decide what to do with each important family. I'm gonna do that, I'm curious. All right, what is this? Uh, they've accepted, the, that's us letting us know that they've accepted the peace offer, of course. And for this one, lose a little popularity. I'm cool with that. Let's imprison these guys. Here we go. Several of the important families are known for, have, for uh, having held sway. Whilst we have co-signed the lesser men and uh, consigned, there we go, the lesser men and women, 
of this fallen nation to their fate, we must decide upon carefully how to treat the elite. Okay, here's what we can do. Uh, welcome to the family. So this lets a family move in, consisting of five members. We lose a little popularity for this. Offer sanctuary. We lose popularity, and they move to Macedon. Uh, oh, more of them move. Okay. Family of 13. Oh, never mind. These are all allowing them to move in, but the last... Um, I, we get to pick which families we want to move in. We lose some popularity for each one. Uh, or you can have them crucified. Crucifixion increases popularity. Yeah. Ruler will be awarded popularity per family crucified. Hmm. Do we have any reason? Is popularity important? Popularity... You don't want it to get really low. You can have stability issues. However, it's mostly important if you're in a republic because then you get voted for. And so popularity is very important on if people are going to vote in favor of you, if they're going to vote for you, if they're going to vote for your stuff, or if your position is just going to be a nonstop revolving door of people you don't like and people vetoing what you want to do and whatnot. So, um, do I have any reason to take any of these people? So the biggest family are these guys. Um, like, this family. Do I have any reason to take this guy in? That's he, not actually much in his immediate family, yeah. Generals and stuff. Is he very talented? No. Hold on. The leaders of these families, who here is talented? This guy is incredibly talented. And he's young, too, 18. This guy's quite talented as well. He's a researcher. Okay, that's his job. You're a ruler. I'll take those two families. We'll take that family. And we'll take this family. And the other ones can be crucified to get a little bit of our popularity back. Okay. War is over. Just have the armies go back to the capital for now. Figure out what to do with them from there. Uh, exiled army, armies, of course. We lack a governor in some of our new territories. That's to be expected. We'll take uh, one of these new guys who's really amazing at finesse. Actually, before we do that, uh, let's look at our government. Do we want to reappoint some people? Because we got these new families in. Uh, we could, for instance, replace this guy with uh, our new guy with higher finesse. He'd get us more national tech. So this is our government screen, by the way. This is where we pick everybody who's in our government, and you can see, like, dictated by this skill, this job increases this stat. So this guy is, he's our royal steward. That's just a horrifically Greek name for it, I guess. And um, he is currently giving us 8% national tax. So of every skill, you get another percent of national tax. So we'd bump up to 11% if we switch to this guy. And he's also intensely loyal. Um, wouldn't surprise me if to some degree... That is because I saved his life after a war. Uh, that's 3% more taxes. I can dig it. Switch him out. I'm sure the other guy will be pissed off at me now. Yeah, I just saw Pretender support. I don't know if it's this guy, really. He doesn't support my, uh, he doesn't support my heir. He supports my Pretender. He's a reformed gambler with a gambling win. Vengeful, intelligent, lustful, generous. What are we again? Ambitious and blood of Antipatros. Antipatros. Which is charisma, prominence, build cost down, and monthly le legitimacy. That's all quite strong, actually. A great fan, uh, friend of Alexander, Antipater, was responsible for safeguarding Macedonia during Alexander's great campaigns. His loyalty to Alexander and domineering attitude towards the lesser Greek states was tempered by his son, Cassander, who Maria. we are playing as, Cassander. Those contempt of Alexander was no secret. Uh, whose contempt of Ex Alexander was no secret, and whose legacy included the founding and restoration of many great cities, which probably explains the build cost being down. Thanks for following, Donnie. Welcome to the vlog. Hope you enjoyed the stream. Uh, let's hold a triumph, though. We just won a war. Uh, for 720 days, I believe it is, after winning a war, you can hold a triumph. You spend 20 military points and 20 religious points, which is very little, I would say, for this. You gain loyalty, um, and you also gain popularity, and a chance to gain a cognomen? 
I don't know what that is actually. However, the popularity, 25 popularity, that's easy popularity. Here we go. We've held a triumph. Which is essentially like a post, a post victorious war celebration through the streets. You've probably heard of like Roman triumphs and stuff. Okay, so we do need a governor up in here though. And what are you governing exactly? Uh, it would be governing our holdings in this land, okay. Uh, our next best guys are these two. They're both about as loyal as each other. Neither one is popular at all. This guy is a scholar. If governor, he'll increase research points. That is a nice trait. I like research points. Not that we probably have many citizens in there to give us research, but we'll put him in charge. And his governor policy that he's chosen outright, uh, we can spend diplo points on changing this, by the way, or oratory points as they're called. Um, although we gain a little tyranny for doing it because it's not our land that we're governing. He picked civilization effort, which will help industrialize and civilize the land, while also slowly naturally turning tribesmen into either slaves or free men, which I tend to like more than pop, or um, tribal pop. So I'm actually pretty happy with that, yeah. Um, I'm happy that he picked civilization effort. That's a pretty good thing to pick for that land. What if we get really popular? Will we go the way of Caesar? Says Sassers. <laughs> if we're really popular, but every other, um, if every other person in the Republic, like in higher power, fucking hates us, yeah, we very well could go the way of Caesar. But we're not in a Republic. Our government is an aristocratic monarchy, which I'm pretty happy with this, actually. This is, uh, this, in terms of monarchies go, this is a pretty solid government type. I dig. Uh, two oratory ideas and one military idea. That's a pretty nice combo. I like that. Um, I like all of these bonuses quite a bit. We can get away with some corruption, some tyranny, because we have some solid bonuses towards getting rid of it slowly over time. So we can take some of those more advantageous events that have the negative side effect of giving tyranny without much worry. We can see we are, we're actually... Uh, we have quite a few territories now. We have uh, three governors. One is us. We govern the, the core territory. We have a uh, governor of Greece. He is also a pretender. Yes, he's part of our family here. Antipater. I'm sorry, is his name Antipater Antipater? Our son Antipater Antipater. That's actually his name. He's not super talented. He's fine. Uh, he's crafty which does increase his corruption, but his finesse is up a lot, and finesse is good for a governor. Um, he's also good at enslaving people if a commander. He's cruel. It does make his slaves perform better, though, actually. Um, he's cautious, which is fine. And, of course, um, blood of Antipos. An Antipos. Antipater Antipatrid. Ah, Antipater Antipatrid. Thanks for correcting me there. <clears throat> uh, I have nothing to do with him. I need to get my armies home. I want to get them all back in my territory. Oh, what is this? Thrice. Uh, we're outraged to discover that they've canceled uh, the military access rights. Oh, that's fine. Yeah. That's, that's our allies canceling that they've asked for military access because they don't need it anymore. Which, the tooltip acts all outraged about that, but I'm fine. Who cares? Our 21-year-old dude looks 41. I agree. Is there a vassal limit? Uh, I do not believe... There's not a hard vassal limit, but if you go over your limit of diplomatic relations, kind of like an EU4, you take a hit to, I believe it is, oratory power gain. Um, let me double-check something here. So our governors, we can see what our policies are on everything here. Um... I'm generally okay with what they picked with these things. I'm not a big fan of uh, local autonomy governor policy. Population output is massively down, but everyone's way happier. But that's none of my land. I'm not going to change it and take the tyranny yet. I have no tyranny, so I could get away with it. Um, my own personal land, one piece of land here is 
it has an extra import trade route and extra commerce income, which I'm a huge fan of that one for making serious money is just lots of imports and trade routes. The rest of my land is all set to acquisition of wealth. It increases the local tax and the commerce income, so a lot of money comes in. It also increases governor wage, though, by 20%. So I personally get paid a lot. 